Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go more in depth about the Immersive Templates Blueprint Structure and how you would work with it for multiplayer and single player. If you've worked with version 1.0 through 1.1, then there are a few tiny tweaks to the blueprints, but for the most part, everything is the same. Okay, so how does this work? How does this affect you if you don't use multiplayer? Good news, not much. As I said in the overview video, everything is pretty much the same with a few minor tweaks. The only major difference is that now, instead of the logic being played right after an event, there are these extra events that take place, which I will explain more in depth shortly. If you're working with single player, I recommend checking this out still, as I genuinely mean it when I say it's not that different at all from how it was, and I personally think that learning this will improve your skills working with Unreal by learning how to implement basic replication. Alright, let's get into it and get a full breakdown on how everything works. So let's start with the immersive character blueprint. We have our input keys, and let's look at the E key. So like it was before, out of the E key pressed and released, the command is sent to the immersive component. So let's double click that and it'll open it up. And now we're at the actual start event for the interact button. Right now, this red event is the equivalent of a regular event ran in a single player project. The difference for multiplayer is that if you look to the left, you can see that it says run on server. This setting was added by me by clicking this drop down on the right under replicates and setting it to run on server. You want this input from the player to be ran on the server. From here, it's checking if whoever sent the input request has authority. Are they the server? So out of this check, if they're the client remote accessing into the game, the function goes to the client. And if they're on the server, it goes to the server. Double click into any of these blue functions and it'll snap us right here to the left under network stuff. If I zoom out all of the way, we went from here to here. So now we can see server E key pressed and client E key pressed. From my understanding of replication, the server is the master of the game that everyone plays. If you play Call of Duty or Fortnite, you are logging into a server that hosts the match. And when you're seeing other players move around, shoot, that is all being done on the server side. And it's being replicated, copied, duplicated to the clients aka the players. The process of multiplayer replication is getting whatever happens on the server to show accurately to the clients. So when our player character presses E, we first want to check, are they on the server? And if so, proceed. And if not, go tell the server that they pressed E. From here, you can see that the server is going to a multicast E key pressed event. And if you double click it, you're down here. The way the project was before was that the interact event went straight into this logic here. If you're single player, it's the same thing. The interact button is pressed from the player to the component to the multicast. Single player games will always run as if they're the server. So anything where you see client can basically be ignored and you can just follow the path to the multicast. And if you've worked with the asset on previous versions, you'll see that the logic is the same as before, connects right here out of the multicast. If you noticed, I've highlighted the multicast events here with a gold box, so it's easier to follow along with where the main logic is being run. Okay, so that explains server to multicast, but what about the client section? If we go back to the beginning, we can see that it's checking if the inputter is on the server or not. When playing in client mode, any input from the player is going to return as a result as client. Let's double click the client event and from here, we can see that it also says run on server, which is what we want. And also set here on the right, the client is telling the server it's pressing the E key. And from here, you can see that it goes to the server and the server is running the actual input to be multicasted or replicated to the rest of the players. On that multicast event, you'll want to change the dropdown to instead of run on server to multicast. So to summarize it, if you're working with multiplayer, 
Anytime you have an input coming from a player or client, you want the structure of logic to be ran as input, check for if they have authority. True, go to server, and if false, go to client to go to server. And finally, multicast. In the end, I'm not an expert, I just learned all of this stuff, and if what I'm saying is wrong, I'm sure y'all won't hesitate about roasting me in the comments. As I showed in the overview of 1.2, there are still errors present with this and I'm actively working on resolving them. Once I do, I'll give updates on that as well. There are also more things to look out for, like checking each actor's class defaults to ensure that replicates is set to true for the things that you need to replicate. I'm actually really glad that I did network replication after building everything out, despite Epic's documentation saying that you should start with multiplayer in mind, because it helped me see what is replicated by default before setting replicates to true on all these different variables, events, and actors. I know this template isn't the best example of multiplayer replication, but I hope it can help you start somewhere and make you feel comfortable with attempting to integrate things. There is a whole lot more to cover aside from what's in this video, so I encourage you to really dive into the blueprints to see what's going on with each process and try to understand how everything works the way it does and try turning things off one by one to see what gets affected. Anyway, thanks so much for sticking through. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.